Hello, my name is Oskar Landgren. I'm from the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. Today I will present an interactive online tool called GCM Eval, which you can use to evaluate global climate model ensembles and can aid you in selecting a sub-ensemble from the large ensemble. This is a presentation for EDU, uh, which this year, due to the coronavirus situation, has been moved to an online-only meeting. This is work that has been led by Kaisa Parding at our institute, and I'm presenting it on behalf of all the contributors that you can see here on the list. I recorded this video, and I'm hoping that it can be useful to, to give you some more information about how this tool works. One of the motivations behind this is that there is a very large number of uh, global climate models, and it can be, for many users, uh, impossible to use all of them, so you have to make a selection. For regional climate modelers, the uh, example here is on the right, where uh, you have to make a priority between high resolution or large ensemble size or, uh, or low cost uh, in terms of computational power required. There are different considerations in this. Um, for example, uh, the selection, uh, how people select uh, models from, from an ensemble uh, can often be subjective and it can also turn out that uh, when you analyze the models that you have selected that uh, for some metrics it could be that you are biased uh, for example that you have selected only models that have a very strong warming in a certain region and so on then there is the sensitivity of choices in the selection process how you make your priorities will influence the results one way to select is to say that okay i would only like to consider models that have a satisfactory reproduction of the present day climate for instance compared to reanalysis uh, but then you also should consider the range of the future outcomes in this ensemble. So what we propose here is an interactive online tool. Uh, so it's a website um, where the user can select uh, different weights. And by very easily changing these weights, uh, you can then see what effect it has on which, which uh, models uh, turn out to perform better uh, or worse. Uh, so that this is a way you can get a feel for your sensitivity in the model selection. Another thing is that in this tool we have provided a ranking, which is then based on the performance in the present day climate uh, using different free analysis. And then the tool also provides scatter plots that illustrates the, the spread of the, the full ensemble, so all of the ensemble members, and then also with the selected ones that you have, so that you can see, okay, maybe I should also add one that has a strong warming in this region or that has a, a stronger um, precipitation change, for example. The different options that you can select in this tool, uh, they are focus regions. Uh, so these are three, 33 different regions from the fifth IPCC report um, that you can use. Uh, so you can select the primary and the secondary uh, region. This is the list of the different user selectable weights. So you can select a uh, focus region variable, season, uh, and different skill scores as well. Uh, there are different scenarios included. We have for uh, the CMIP5 data, we have RCP 4.5 and 8.5. And for CMIP6, we have SSP 585. We are also considering adding more here, but this is what we have right now. Uh, so the different time periods that you can look at and compare are the present day, uh, which is 1981 to 2010 and then a near future, uh, 2021 to 2050, and then a far future, 2071 to 2100. Uh, the reference data sets used are uh, ERA Interim, ERA 5, and GPCP. Uh, so the model is providing a ranking uh, based on the selected weights that you have uh, seen on the last slide. It uses the reanalysis data for the reference period, and it, uh, it weights the, uh, the performance and provides a, a total ranking uh, that is then sensitive to the different weights that you have selected. By having this as an online tool, you can very easily change the different weights and see how the ranking is changing. And then, of course, we should also remember that if you would include other metrics, it would give different results. So this could serve as a first idea of what, uh, what se selection you should make, but then, of course, you may want to do other analysis as well. I'd like to demonstrate this tool for you now. If you go to the website, gcmeval.met.no, then this is what you get. First, here on the right, you have a box showing some instructions for getting started. 
uh, then below you you can expand information about the data and the source code uh, and further below here you have the the results the ranking of the models depending on your uh, selected criteria that I will show you soon then further below you have uh, two scatter plots for the regions um, that you have selected primary region and a secondary region then below uh, you have the the percentage of the spread of your selection compared to the spread of the full ensemble in terms of the temperature change and the precipitation change uh, in the future period compared to the reference period. Uh, so let's make a selection. Let's say for example that we are interested in East Africa. So we're selecting this domain as our primary focus region and we leave the, the global as the secondary. Then we uh, assign weights for the skill evaluation. So the primary focus region is very important. That gives a weight 2 and then the secondary gets a weight 1. You could also remove it uh, if you think that you're only interested in one. Uh, then for variables we say that we want to really find out which models uh, are reproducing the precipitation patterns well for example. So we say that precipitation is very important and we leave the temperature at 1 we are uh, very concerned with the uh, spring so we set that to very important and we leave the rest at uh, one we can also set different weights for the different skill scores so the bias the spatial correlation the spatial standard deviation ratio and the root mean square error of the annual cycle let's say for example that uh, we want to have the spatial correlation uh, well reproduced so we say that that's very important um, then we continue and uh, we want uh, the, the plot to show the annual mean for the far future uh, relative to the reference period. Then we go to the ensemble selection and here we can uh, select the scenarios. So we have uh, the RCP 4.5 and 8.5 from CMIP 5 and SSP 5 8.5 from CMIP 6. Let's say for example that we want to run an impact model and we can only afford to run 15 models. We select 15 and we want them to best correspond to the criteria that we have just selected up here. Uh, so now I just push the best button. So now if we continue a bit down here we see that there are 15 models that are now selected and these are the ones that correspond to the weights that we have just assigned. Then there are also some advanced settings, uh, for example, which reference data sets you want to use. And then if you have some models that you know that they, for example, have some errors or so, you can also exclude them here. Then we can go and check out the results. We see that this table has been updated and here it currently shows just the selected models and then the ranking according to the weights that we have set. If we want to compare to all models, we can do it like this instead. Uh, green means that it's better producing the statistics of the uh, reanalysis and pink means that it's worse. Uh, so for example, we can go down here a bit and have a look at these ones. We see here, for example, that the MPI, Earth System Model, Low Resolution Realization number 3, has a rank number 3. These rankings will, of course, depend very much on, on the criteria that we have selected. Using this as an online tool is very powerful because it makes you able to see how even a small change in your criteria will influence your, your ranking of the models. Then, here you have the two box plots, so one for the primary focus region, which is then the East Africa domain that we selected. Um, here we have now on the x-axis we have the temperature change from the reference period to the far future period. And this is precipitation change. And we can also go in and look at each individual model here. The selected ones are uh, in the symbols. Now the red diamonds are the RCP 8.5 models and the the blue pluses are the uh, SSP 585 models. There are some tools up here, uh, Autoscale for instance here. So now we can see that uh, these models are quite well representing the spread of the uh, ensemble. Then uh, we can also, uh, instead of using uh, red and blue here for which ensemble it belongs to, we can use the model ranking as the color scale. Then uh, you can also add the distribution as box plots. Here they show the spread of the ensemble that is selected. That's the first box here. Um, then the second box plot is the distribution for the RCP 8.5. And then the, the distribution for the SSP 585. So these are now for precipitation and these are for temperature. You can also see that uh, by doing this selection here with these 15 models, we have 
a bit less of a spread compared to the full ensemble. So, for example, because you see that these are fairly close, so if you would run these in an impact model, maybe it could be wise to remove one of the one of the clustered ones uh, that are uh, close to each other here and maybe add one of these up here, for instance. Um, then finally, uh, these numbers here uh, show the summary statistics of the spread. So here, for example, for the secondary region, so that means that the, the 15 models that we have selected, the distance from the lowest to the highest is 55% of the distance from the lowest here to the highest here. So from this point to this point. In order to increase this, you could maybe remove one of the ones that are close to each other here and add maybe one of these instead. Uh, another example of what you can do using this tool is uh, what, we have, uh, what we have here is now a post hoc evaluation of the Eurocortex GCM selection. So we selected the GCMs that were used in Eurocortex and we were asking ourselves how well does the current uh, selected GCM ensemble capture the spread of the full CMIP5 ensemble. So we looked at two regions, Northern Europe and Central Europe, and we used these, uh, these simulations here. Uh, so unfortunately, there are three of the models that are used in, uh, in uh, Eurocortex that are not available on ESGF, so we unfortunately do not have these three, but the rest we have. So similar to what I I showed in the demonstration, we now have a figure showing uh, on the x-axis the projected temperature change from the present day to the far future, and the y-axis shows the projected precipitation change. So the left plot here is uh, RCP 4.5, and the right uh, we have RCP 8.5. The purple dots here are the CMIP5 simulations, uh, and the gray circles, they are the selected models. So we can see here that uh, the, there, there is a little tendency of some of the models being a, a little bit clustered here in terms of the uh, projected future climate change. You can see also on the box plots that they do not fully cover the, the spread of the, of the whole ensemble. So this is Northern Europe and then if we go to the next slide we have the same figure but for Central Europe. Here we see that the models cover the spread better. Then looking at another domain, this is the Cortex South America domain. And here I've only looked at two uh, sub-regions. So this, uh, this one on the left here is the West Coast South America domain here. Um, and here you can really see uh, quite easily that uh, the, while the temperature spread is quite well covered, there is uh, a problem here perhaps that uh, there are quite many models that show a precipitation increase but none of these are actually selected for downscaling. So, so this is something that you could discover um, by using this tool and see that, um, okay, so maybe we should select one of the models which are up here in order to more closely represent the spread of the full uh, CMIP5 ensemble. But on the other hand, if you look at another region, uh, which is uh, then again using the same selection from uh, Cortex South America, you see that we don't have this issue. So this is something that can be quite regionally or even sub-regionally dependent. There are a few limitations with this tool. It's using monthly data only, so that means we cannot say anything about daily or sub-daily statistics. It could also be that the, <clears throat> that the predefined regions that are included may not um, correspond to the regions that you are interested in. At the moment, we are only using scenarios uh, RCP 4.5, RCP 8.5, and SSP 585. Um, we are thinking about including more as well, but uh, yeah. And likewise for the models, uh, not all models are here, but we've tried to sample that we get uh, at least one or two realizations of, of each model. Anyway, we, we hope that you can find this tool useful, um, that it can, for example, help you to, to get an, an overview uh, before you start to download a lot of model data and uh, before you make your own detailed analysis. For more information about GCM Eval, you can check out this website where you can test the tool for yourself or if you want to download it and uh, implement some other analysis methods in it, then you can check out the source code from this address. We also very recently got this uh, article accepted in the journal uh, Climate Services. So uh, we are very happy if you can check that out and read more about the, the tool as well. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.